Hey everybody, it's me, John Anthony Chihak Sotero. I am the anti-hero, and I'm here today with a mail call slash haul. Um, I just picked up a few books from Lady T Comic Keys, and uh, one of them was a book I picked up uh, from their show last Sunday, not just yesterday. Um, and then two I picked up when I went to go see them today to pick this up. So I got Autumn, Autumnal, the foil variant. It's a little hard to see in the bag and board, but I'm not going to take it out because I don't want to, um, that's a little bit better. I don't want to get any fingerprints on it, but it's just a really, really cool, uh, foil cover, um, from Vault Comics. And I then also today picked up Static, number two, Shocking Origin. So this is the origin of Static Shock, or Static. And then I also picked up issue three. So I do need to get an issue number one, anybody who's out there. And then this I found in, in their dollar bin. Uh, Justice League International number 10. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Green Lantern Gnort. Um, that's the one that looks like a like a schnauzer, I think. Um, then these books I picked up from uh, it, two sketch covers and three, I think three issues of Goldilocks in Zombieland from Legend Studios. That's uh, Richard and Bat Zerga. Um, and so this is, let me find, because I want to show you the sketch covers last. Okay. So issue four. And um, uh, if you're not keeping track on uh, Legend Studios, um, Richard and Batty uh, announced on their last show, that was right before Halloween, that... Um, the creator, Jeff Hughes, of um, Goldilocks and Zombieland is going in a different direction, um, uh, artistically, I guess, with the series. Um, they were saying that it was supposed to be something like um, five issues or something like that, and then it grew to six, which they completed, and then it now it's up to like 17 um, that he's writing these stories for. So um, they're stepping away from that and they're going to start working on a lot of their own projects like um, uh, uh, Richard's product uh, projects include like Taffy the Clown which is like a horror clown series and then um, Batty's um, series is it's I'm so blanking on it right now and I feel bad but it's it's Batty and something and um, or Batty and someone and but it's just going to, as unfortunate as it is that it's going to, um, this is the end of their run on this, uh, you know, it, it's going to allow them to do their own thing. So it would be like if I was collaborating on, with somebody on something and I really wanted to get back to working on the Bubba Patrol or Euthanasia or Fuzzy Face and, you know, whatever the collaboration was ended. And, and yeah, it'd be kind of sad, but um, it'd be good, you know, because you get to do you know, that which you fall in love with. So that's issue four. And then this, or that was issue three. No, that was issue four. Sorry. That was issue four. That was a fan club exclusive cover, but they didn't have any more copies of issue four. So they um, they gave me that one at the same cover price, um, number five. And then the, uh, <laughs> the uh, Big Daddy Roth homage. On number six, which is which is really cute. I like that a lot. Um, and then I picked up these two sketch covers that uh, Richard did. And this first one is on an Amazing Spider-Man number one with Miles Morales. Super beautiful. I'm going to have to get frames for these. I put uh, my uh, gold bikini Cara Dune that uh, Batty did in a frame. And uh, definitely gonna have to frame this one. This is this is a beautiful piece by Richard. And then um, he did the She-Hulk on an indestructible Hulk cover. Let me 
really, really nice. Um, just like the line work on it, like you don't need to fill it all the way in and the detail that he got, like especially in the bicep and the veins, and then you can see like the six pack and the serrations of the obliques and um, it just, it, it turned out really, really nicely. When I saw this, like I knew I wanted it, but fortunately he had not sold it by the time I asked about it. It's just kind of nice to see, you know, you can draw like a powerful, uh, muscular female and she's still, you know, she doesn't have to look masculine at the same time. So he did a great job on that. And that's, that's not an easy thing to do. A lot of times people struggle with that when they, when they're drawing, you know, if, if they're trying to draw more of a, a slight male, uh, character and they draw them like kind of gaunt and more androgynous really appears a lot more female especially if they give them more typically female characteristics, which is strange. Like Michael Turner used to do things like add eyelashes to all of his characters. Well, unless there's some sort of, I don't want to say defect, but something where you don't have eyelashes, like everybody's got eyelashes, right? But when you draw eyelashes on a, on a male and, and you can see them, it, it makes it look more feminine. It might even look like eyeliner. Um, when you draw, like, I always draw a bottom lip on on most of my male characters. I don't necessarily draw a top lip on them. Um, besides, a lot of people have, you can see the bottom lip. You can't really see the top lip. The top lip is really thin. Um, but you draw, like, poofy lips on, on women, kissable lips, as they might be called. Um, but if you draw that on a man, it, it looks strange. Um, and it's, it's kind of like... Uh, learning in, in art school and stuff like that, where like if you take a photograph of a quarterback throwing the ball and you get the arm coming right here and it's a photograph, it looks okay. But if you recreated that as a painting or uh, a sketch, it's going to look odd because it's going to look like the arm is coming out of the top of their head. And therefore, with an illustration or a painting or anything that is not a straight photograph, you have to manipulate the angle, draw the arm back or a little bit forward or something like that in order to make it not look strange. Um, uh, I will also be, well, I guess I can show um, this because my friend Demetrius does not watch my YouTube channel. At least I hope he doesn't. Um, this is a sketch cover that I'm working on for him. <laughs> okay, you can't see it very well. Okay, it is uh, issue three of the Super Duper Cyprus. It is a um, sketch of Agnew running through uh, snowy woods. It it'll look way better when I'm finished and I'll probably do another video or at least take pictures and post it. Um, and I did them as Weapon Agnew. Um, the, the costume Agnew wears in issue number one of the Bubba Patrol is a ninja costume. And originally it was going to be just a jet black ninja costume. Because, I mean, that's what you think of when you think of ninjas. And when I got to the point where I was, like, getting ready to color the book, I was like, that's going to be real boring. And it's going to be real distracting. Just this solid jet black costume and all these different panels. And it's just going to take away from everything. So... I, I went ahead, of course, and I changed it to the uh, classic Tiger Stripe Wolverine costume. And then even his ninja mask still has kind of like it's yellow on the sides, and then he's got the little stripe down the middle, just like Wolverine's costume. So the, the point was, is it went from being this, um, you know, this straight, um, this straight adaptation of a ninja costume to being something that, you know, just like, well, he's kind of like Wolverine in that he's got claws and he's furry and he's little. And at times he has a bad temper 
And if you read the Bubba Patrol, you'll see that kind of come out a little bit when he gets mad at Sabu because he thinks Sabu has abandoned him. Um, but then you get, you know, on issue number, this is the special collected. I recreate um, Uncanny 133 where he's fighting off the Hellfire Club guards in the basement. But I turn it into he's fighting off robot hamster sentries and Sabu is helping him. So this is like that uh, uh, a single image of the lost scene that you never get to see in issue number one of them fighting off the robot hamster sentries. And maybe one of these days I'll, I'll recreate that and I'll just do it as like a special and do it like really rough so it looks like a daily um, from when you're filming movies like back when people, when they used to use film and it wasn't digital and you would do dailies and it wasn't processed yet. And so it was this really rough and grainy and stuff like that. That might be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, just as an extra one of these days, like when we do a collected, once I get issue five finished. So got to get back to work on that. I got to finish this super duper cypher sketch cover for my boy Demetrius. And then Demi commissioned me to draw his, his dog, Lucy. And so I'm going to be doing that. And then I have a Tiffa Lockhart piece that I need to do for a, um, a final fantasy slash, uh, kingdom hearts, uh, draw auction. Um, that's being hosted by my new friend, Mog Park. Um, Mog is one of the people who helped orchestrate the whole 101 Tales along with An Vu and Mog's husband, uh, Mel. And man, on Sunday after my, my whole thing was done and I sat down and I watched Mog and Mel do their, their tale, and then I watched An do hers, I was done by the end of that, man. I was so exhausted. It literally felt like the Sunday at a comic book convention. Like it, You're like so geared up for it. And then afterwards, you're just like, oh man, the adrenaline's just gone. And for me, it was one day, like one hour. And I got to tell the tale and it just, you get it so amped up for it. So hopefully they'll be able to post the video link pretty soon um, on Comics Plex and you'll be able to watch the entire thing and get a better idea of my creation um, and the book, The Bubble Patrol, and the legacy I'm delivering. Until next time, you guys take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I'm going to pop the link for Facebook, or actually for the Legends uh, of Heroes and Villains store, in the description below so you can check out their work. They're going to do a Black Friday sale. I'm also going to pop the link in for Lady T Comic Keys for their Facebook page because they will be doing a Black Friday, Saturday, and Sunday sale this coming week. So definitely check them out if you like comics, if you like original artwork, if you just want to watch and help bolster their numbers a little bit, that would that would be great. And it would mean a lot to me. So also, if you, know, you appreciate what you see, please consider liking, uh, subscribing, and sharing this video. And take care of yourselves this holiday week.